Hey, what's up, guys? This is AfterBuzz TV's Concert Experience, and we have Mary Lambert in the house today, so stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, AfterBuzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. I feel like we're getting an exclusive just hearing your single. Mary Lambert, <laughs> thank you for coming in today. Thanks for having me. I just have to start this out by saying I'm like geeking out a little bit because Heart on My Sleeve has been like my album for the last year no. and a half. Yeah. Really? I feel like you're like my spirit animal because I'm like, I'm in a long distance relationship. Totally. I came out in the church. Like, yes. I'm like, we get each other. Yeah. We, ma we have matching nose rings. This is, <laughs> this is all good. So True. new single. Yeah. Talk to me about it. I'm I'm obsessed. Like I mean, I'm obviously, like you should be. You know, you have to like your own work. That's yeah, what you make. That's good. But like I'm trying to be like more humble about how great I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, I um I'm st I'm really excited about it. So this is a song that uh, my girlfriend and I actually co-wrote, and um it kind of came about because the label I was working with at the time was like, we just haven't heard the thing yet. You know, we we're waiting for the hit, and I was like. I don't want to write a song. I just want to hang out with my girlfriend. And then the song was born. And um, she actually engineered it and produced it and sings backup vocals oh, in wow. it. And she makes an appearance in the video. And it just feels really exciting to do something with your partner, you know, especially when so often touring and promo and all of it, you become, it's a different world, yeah. you know. And we live in Massachusetts. And so if I'm doing promo or touring and stuff, it's so you know divisive in a lot of ways you have to kind of compartmentalize your life and to be able to like it feels like she's with me yeah, that's wherever cool. i go it feels really special and it's got to be even harder because you're both artists doing your yeah. own separate thing absolutely well she loves being in the studio that is kind of okay we have a studio at the house so it's, it's that's her happy place you know do you guys ever write like revenge songs like you get in a fight and you're like oh, i'm gonna write a better song than you. <laughs> no <laughs> oh, you should we write st we write really stupid songs just being in the kitchen cooking or something of like will you hand me the green beans you know like <laughs> just stupid stuff next coming like, next year <laughs> so the album is shame is an ocean i swim across yes so you played some of the songs live at buzzfeed last mm -hmm. night they're a little bit darker yes. than the single yeah so what are we going to hear on the rest of the album? Um, so, yeah, I mean, the the record is, I, I would say, a bit more heady than yeah. the single. It's like, shame is an ocean I swim across. It's like, I want to hang out with a, you. <laughs> a heavy title. And then he, featuring the pop single, hang out with you. <laughs> like, it just, I know that there's, I know that there's a disconnect. But I, I'm trying to embrace more and more, like, that I'm weird and, like, complex or, yeah. like, you know, multifaceted and being, you know, there's, there is some fear of like, will people understand that, you know, there, it maybe doesn't work, um, cohesively and, you know, there's, there's some fear there, but I'm kind of just trust falling and saying, you know, I'm not, I'm not digestible. It's going to be, you know, a lot of different things. Hopefully they, I'm still working on the record. I'm executive producing it and just trying to make all the pieces fit is it, a fun part of the yeah. challenge, you know? And, I honestly uh, think that's more exciting, though, to have, like, different varieties instead of, like, the same song totally. over and over, you know? Yeah. Um, and I'm doing a lot of... My background, actually, is in classical composition and doing orchestral composition. Oh, wow. And um, the the rest of the album has a lot of... Uh, I've been just composing like mad, like, making... There's quartets and uh, orchestra and um, basically taking the melodic ideas in different parts of the songs and, and reimagining them classically and um, and having that sort of weave in and out of the record so it is it is like I want it to be one long yeah. concept you know and so yeah seeing how all the pieces fit is really interesting and there's going to be spoken word I have some great features and I'm, just exciting. Ex I'm, I'm, I'm stoked and I'm doing this independently now which is really exciting yeah. to be in, in full control and like, yeah I wanted to talk to you about that because I know like your last album on a major label so you have like to write with all these teams of people yeah. sometimes assigned to you sometimes people you choose yeah are you collaborating with anybody else on this or is it all your writing it's me oh that's yeah. cool I mean besides besides Michelle um yeah. and I have been working with some outside producers just there's another single I've been working on um and and so when I'm when I'm if I'm thinking with the intention of pop minded or if I'm thinking with the direction of radio, I do I don't naturally write that way. I like to take elements of my own writing and put it in that sort of calculated yeah. thing. 
Um, and so that's helpful to work with co-writers for that specific intention. But if I'm making an album of my artistic identity, the, o- the best way I know how to do that is like really to be in full control of it and take ownership. And also now to be able to produce it myself is another uncharted thing, but I'm just kind of I'm winging it. I don't know if it'll. That's you know, exciting, though. Hopefully, it'll it'll sound good. I don't know. So, what like went all into the decision of deciding to go independent? Um, I mean, I mean, it just there were things that I wanted to accomplish. I don't think w- there was a disconnect with uh, with me and the label, and it was honestly really amicable. They were just like, we can't offer you what we think is best for you and we think that you can fly on your own we would honestly be a disservice and we would hold you back and just to have I think because it is kind of difficult to market somebody that is trying to do so many different things at once and you know I just launched the JC Penney campaign and I do things with the national parks and I do my poetry and I do pop music it there is I can understand that it is difficult to to market someone that way because we operate in such a categorical you know, society. Yeah. And you want some something that's digestible and easy to say, okay, this is alt rock or this is, you know, this is the pop thing. And to, if you don't fit in that box, it's difficult to figure out how, where your niche is. So my, you know, I, I think that I know best how to market myself or what avenues to go to and just trusting that I have that innate capability yeah. and also I love owning my own business like I I that's a passion for me and maybe I'm weird but I I think that I I compartmentalize pretty well where I'm like now I'm business person and now I'm artist and and I think sometimes that's difficult for artists and they want to they want to have a team of people or someone else handling that but I love it I love I love business stuff. I think it's cool, And being though. real smart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really smart. And I'm going to make a lot of money. <laughs> um, so I want to talk to you a little bit about playing. You've been playing all these Pride festivals. It's Pride Month. Mm-hmm. And obviously with Orlando and everything, it's got to be a different vibe than the past. What's that been like? I performed at Louisville Pride, or it was at Kentuckiana in Kentucky. And uh, it was the first time I'd done She Keeps Me Warm since Orlando happened. And I lost it. I couldn't. I got. I maybe sang thirty percent of the song. I'm just like wiping my tears oh. as I'm playing piano, and it was so um, cathartic and necessary. And you just had hundreds of people singing along and holding, like ho- having this really sacred space for all of us to process together and to be in community with each other. And, you know, I was, like, concerned halfway through the song. I was like, I can't, I'm not singing well, or, like, I I can't hold out this long note. And just realizing that it's not about that, like, it's something far more than my ego. Yeah. It's about facilitating this cathartic moment. It's about being a vessel for something good, you know, for healing that is so crucial right now. And what's that got to feel like with your song? Because obviously it's been such a huge part in the gay rights movement you were like sometimes the first like gay song anybody ever played yeah. on radio you yeah. know yeah I, I don't I feel so I don't know what I did in my life or the life before or whatever like I don't know what I did to be in this position and to have had this platform yeah to say things that I feel passionate about or I, same love fell onto my lap and I mean it was really divine and everything from that point on is just felt so intuitive and like it was just supposed to happen and as like hokey as that sounds I really do believe that you know I attempted suicide when I was 18 and I remember this like feeling that was like no you're not done you have so much you have something really important to accomplish and it was when I was dealing with coming out in the church and like my own demons and I was just diagnosed with bipolar disorder and you know, just dealing with the abuse from my childhood. Like, it was just this, I couldn't handle it. And to think back to that moment where I was like, okay, I just got to hold on. I don't know what for. I'll suck it up. And I had, like, three more crappy years. And then, and then I don't know, things just started changing. And to be um, a part of this, like, this pinnacle moment I think for for our culture 
to be a part of same love was like alter like it yeah. al- it altered and it and shifted me it's i'm always going to have that it's always going to be that and i sometimes i get scared when i think of, when i'm writing songs i'm like do i want to sing this song for the next 10 years yeah. do i want to sing this song for the rest of my life that's how you have to think about your writing of like i heard that alanis morissette like you know wrote uninvited at a time you know that she was really hurting and in pain and had to sing it you know every night for like 10 years and w- was kind of like man i'm not this angry anymore and then came out with thank you and and i think that i don't know if that really resonates with me of like yeah just to have to have that foresight but also still be present in what yeah. you have to process and so the fact that like my song that i get to like sing for the rest of my life is same love and she keeps me warm i am so lucky i'm the luckiest i don't i don't know i've too too blessed well in that song in particular i feel like even for me was like helpful in coming out and Mm. hearing like okay this is a real thing yeah was there a song or an artist that sort of did the same thing for you um there i mean there's a couple but the first thing that comes to mind is Katy perry's i kissed a girl and obviously they're like it's not it's not the perfect song obviously but i when it came on the radio i had i had I was just figuring out that I was gay and it really like was like whoa other people like this is a thing <laughs> and like like it's okay and yeah and I, I just remember being like I kissed a girl too Katy Perry like, <laughs> you're not like, the only one <laughs> um, but for someone that really was formative in my writing was um, was Jewel actually just her story and where she came from and you know really shaped my songwriting yeah. and the my intention of what I wanted to create. I'm hearing like a unplugged I Kissed a Girl cover from oh you on God, your next tour. Amazing. Please make that happen. <laughs> that would be so good. Okay, you mentioned this a little bit earlier, but talk to me about this JC Penney's campaign. It's blowing up. You yeah. literally can't scroll through Facebook without seeing it. Oh. It's cool. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um I'm so I I'm so proud of this campaign. My life is, can I just take a minute? My life is so cool. I don't know what is going on, but I'm having a great time. Um, <laughs> That's good. I'm just like, I am having a party every day. Um, yeah, JC Benny approached me and was like, we'd like, love you to be a part of this campaign. And I was so immediately just like, yes, someone's doing it right. Like I, a lot of people really try and it's, it's not to be, you know, dismissed as like, obviously you know you you try and sometimes you don't get it right but to have someone try think you know be so thoughtful about this campaign and then get it right and then market it and at the end of the day it's a clothing company you know what I mean like they're selling clothes and they have done it in such a tasteful way and really tried to shift the paradigm in doing so and it was really it's it's so necessary for the plus size community to have this you know to have this moment of like here I am, you know, at when so many times I've gone into a store, like I called a bunch of stores today where I was like, hey, could I, do you have any plus size clothing? It's like, no, we only carry up to size 10. It's like, the yeah. world, the world is out there. The world exists. There's so many different kinds of people and it's to have, to have fashion be so limited to one body type is bizarre, you know, and like, like they think that, women that are fat are supposed to be like you know shaming themselves and like sweats and like you know counting almonds in a corner (laughs) you know like crying feeling shameful and bad yeah and then guilt themselves until they lose weight and then everything will be perfect and happy like you have to love your body in order to take care of it and like people that you know are like talking about glorifying obesity or something it's that's not it's not the case like people just want to wear cute clothes like what's wrong with that it's like so political you know it's It's crazy that something that simple is such a big deal i know it's ridiculous so i mean it was just what a breath of fresh air for a clothing company to go what how can we best serve you how can we best serve this community and like to be a part of that conversation was just really awesome. And all the girls in the campaign, like, it's just like a powerhouse. We all went to dinner and was just like, you know, it was like a, what is it? Like when, it was like X-Men. Okay. We're basically <laughs> X-Men. I love that. <laughs> okay, last time I interviewed you, 
we did a little spoken word poetry on the spot. Oh my god! And I yes. gave you three words. Um, so I have three new words for okay. you. Can you do this? I will try. Okay, your words are sharpie, unicorn, and money. Wow! How did I do it? <laughs> you you did it so quickly too. It's um, been a, it's been a long day. <laughs> um. Um. Here is my hand. Wait, what are the what are the <laughs> Sharpie, Sharpie unicorn, unicorn and money. money? Okay. Okay. Here is my Sharpie. Watch me draw. Watch me draw a unicorn. How much money will you pay for this unicorn? How much money will you take for this Sharpie unicorn? Oh, joyous unicorn. Oh, blessed unicorn. Oh, you Sharpie holy grail. Unicorn money. Sharpie. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, so the best part of my 2016. So <laughs> oh my god. Well, we're going to end on that note because you can't top that. <laughs> oh, oh, good man. night. <laughs> good night. Thank you so much for coming in. Hang out with you July 8th. 8th. Okay, yes. July 8th. Yes. Bye. It's really good. Thanks. And where we get the album? Um, album's out November, December, so it'll still okay, be a little bit stay time. Stay tuned. Yeah. Well, thanks again for coming in thanks today. Thanks for having yeah. me. If you guys want more from AfterBuzz, you can find us at AfterBuzz TV on all the social platforms, and we'll see you back in here next time. Yay! <laughs> from executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.